Hello, my students. I believe you are well and you're still keeping safe. Welcome to another session where we are going to continue with the unit that we started, that is child development. And we'll be going through our topic three, which will be peer jet theory of cognitive development. Uh, we are starting to look at theories of child growth and development. And I believe you're still remembering where we stopped in our previous lesson. In previous lesson, we looked at prenatal growth and development. And I left you with some tasks to do, which I want to believe you're still doing what we agreed. So today, we are moving on to a new topic that is Piaget theory of cognitive development. Uh, this is a theory that helps us to understand how children develop cognitively from uh, birth. And uh, in this particular topic, uh, I would like us to be able to explain key terms that are used in the theory. Uh, I would want us also to be able to describe cognitive characteristics of children in each stage of development according to the theory should be able also to analyze the four stages of cognitive development according to Piaget theory and discuss the relevance of the theory to practitioners in early childhood education. <coughs> so in introduction of this particular theory, uh, it's good to know who is Jean Piaget Jean Piaget was a Switzerland who was born in 1896. Uh, and uh, after acquiring his first PhD, he developed interest uh, on how children acquire knowledge. And uh, that led him to conduct a study uh, using his daughter. And uh, he wanted to understand how a child comes to that point of knowing whatever they know. So. Somehow he was like an epistemologist who wanted to know how knowledge is acquired. So he believed that they are both quantitative and, quant quantitative and qualitative differences between the thinking of young children and the way adults think. And he wanted to understand the differences and how children reason out things. So through his theory, he tried to understand how children create knowledge. How do they become intelligent? And one thing that he concluded from his theory is that uh, acquisition of knowledge is an active process. So what are the fundamental concepts of the theory? There are certain key terms that is very important for us to understand as we go through Piaget theory. And one of them is a schema. So we, as students, it's good for us to understand what is a schema. So a schema describes both the, many, uh, the mental and physical actions that are involved in understanding and uh, knowing. And a schema is something like a mental structure which ex exists in the mind. It's not something that physically we can see. It exists in the mind. But through actions, we are able to tell that a certain schema or mental schema is existing. Another term very important is assimilation. Assimilation and accommodation. These two words that are following each other. Assimilation and accommodation, they are terms that go together. Uh, and according to PRJ, assimilation and accommodation are the processes that are involved in acquisition of knowledge. So it's important for us to understand what is assimilation. Assimilation is the process through which individuals take in new information into the already existing schema. That is assimilation. When a child sees something new, within the environment for the first time, what happens is that uh, they try to take in that schema to what they already know. Uh, for example, a child coming across 
a four-legged animal. For example, maybe a cow or a goat. Let's say, for example, a goat. And previously, a child had seen another four-legged animal. For example, maybe um, a dog. When a child sees a goat for the first time, he tries to relate that to what he already knows. For example, now the dog. So seeing a goat for the first time, he might think like this is a dog because it looks somehow like a dog. It is having four legs. So when that is happening, and maybe if you come across a child who is referring to a goat as a dog, what is happening to that child is that the child is trying to assimilate because that particular child is relating what they are seeing now to what they already know, what is existing in their mind. And the next process, which is accommodation, it's a process by which the child now adapts or changes the existing schema in the light of the new information that they have acquired. So for example, with the example that I've just shared, a child who sees goat for the first time and thinks it's a dog, we said is trying to assimilate. But when they come to the point where they realize that uh, this is not a dog, but it is a goat, when they realize that it is a goat, accommodation takes place, meaning uh, the mental schema expands to accommodate a new type of a four-legged animal by the name of a goat. And that way accommodation is said to have taken place. And accommodation takes place in an environment that is stimulative, where there are people who interact with the child and who can help the child to know that uh, now this animal that you're seeing or that you have seen, it's not a dog, but it is a goat. Then uh, we have equ equilibration, and uh, this is a process by which children now try to strike a balance between uh, assimilation and uh, accommodation. We are saying these are two processes that are going hard in hard. With assimilation, uh, we should have accommodation taking place. Uh, if let's say there is assimilation and accommodation uh, that is not happening, there will be kind of imbalance. Uh, and uh, that's the balancing that is brought by through the process that we are referring to as equilibration, uh, where they get to balance the, uh, by, uh, the, the information that is coming in that is new, it gets to be accommodated. And they get to a point where they can say now they have learned something that is new that they did not know previously. So PRJ came up with the four stages of cognitive development, which I would like us to go through. The four stages, we have the sensorimotor stage, uh, which is from zero to two years, pre-operational stage, concrete operational stage and formal operational stage. Those are the four stages of cognitive development according to Piaget. So I would like us to understand again what happens in each of these stages. The first stage, sensory motor stage, as the title of the stage may be implying sensory motor stage. This gives us an idea of how the child runs in this particular stage, sensory motor. They run through their senses and they also run through motoric actions which they make within their environment. So sensorial experiences are very key and important during this stage as they manipulate objects obvious they get to discover some things about the things that they interact with. So uh, a child should be in an environment where they are not really limited, they are not really enclosed, they can make some movement, and an environment enriched with the materials which they can uh, explore. This stage is divided into six sub-stages, and these six sub-stages uh, kind of shows how a child gradually acquires knowledge from uh, one level to another. So immediately after a child is born, how do they get to acquire knowledge? The child or a newborn acquires knowledge 
through what we refer to as reflexes because immediately when they are born what they have are mere reflexes and these reflexes are the ones that helps to learn for example we may ask ourselves how does a newborn learn how to suck so sucking is an activity which is stimulated by presence of reflexes and what happens during the first few weeks after birth, between zero to six weeks, we see coordination of uh, sensation and the action through reflexive behavior. Uh, a, 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 a reflex like sucking, looking, grasping, and how these reflexes operate is that uh, a certain part of a body maybe is touched. That touch acts like a stimulant which makes the child to react in a certain way. For example, with the sucking reflex, when their cheek is, passed, is touched, the ribs, what happens is that the child responds by turning toward whatever has touched them. When the ribs are touched, they respond by just opening their mouth. And whenever something gets into their mouth, the response is basically now sucking. And then the next uh, sub-stage is referred to as a stage of primary circular reaction, which ranges from six weeks to four months. So this is a stage in which uh, a child engages in repetitive activities just for the sake of uh, and at this point uh, or in this particular phase the interest of the child is usually on their body their body parts uh, they might be having an interest maybe on the lab and if the interest is on the lab what they do is maybe they'll be putting the lab into their mouth and maybe sucking it repetitively you remove it and uh, they return it or maybe just getting hold of something like their food and just playing around with it. So these actions are done just repetitively for the sake of uh, And uh, when you see like you have, a, a child has put a, fing a thumb into the, uh, into the mouth, the finger, you remove it, they return it and you see that has become repetitive, uh, that is said to be beginning of development of what is referred to as primitive uh, memory. And the second stage is referred to as a second, um, the third substage is a secondary circular reaction, which ranges between four to eight months. And at this point now, we see the attention of the child shifting now, not just from their own body part, but it shifts to objects that are outside their body. So, uh, and the actions that the child will engage in at this point now is not just for the sake of, but we see a kind of intentionality beginning to develop at this point, such that they will do something that brings about some pressurable results, something that they feel good uh, about it. So for example, if there is a shaker that you have given the child, this child will keep on shaking that particular object. And the reason as to why that child is shaking is, is because of the sound that is being produced, which might be of interest to them and also enjoyable to them. So we see there is movement, uh, which is beyond now just self preoccupation, but they get occupied by things that are outside their body and they begin to develop the ability to differentiate between means and ends meaning they know that if i do this there's something that is happening if maybe i touch this there's something that i'm disturbing and that keeps them now doing an activity again and again then the next sub stage is referred to as a coordination of secondary circular the action substage, which ranges between eight months to 12 months. And at this point, we see um, greater improvement in the coordination of various activities that the child does. There is that coordination of vision and touch, hard eye coordination, 
coordination of schemes and uh, intentionality. And uh, at this point, a child develops ability even to solve some simple problems and on their own. It's at this stage that the child is said to develop what we refer to as object permanence. And object permanence refers to that ability to know that uh, something continues to exist even when it is out of sight. Meaning, at this point when a child maybe is um, playing around, let's say, with, uh, with a toy or with a ball, and uh, this ball falls down and it's hidden somewhere, you see this child now trying to move, to reach out for the object that they were praying with, looking for it all over, meaning that the child knows and remembers that object is existing. But uh, before this stage, when object permanence is not developed, what exists to the child is what they can see. When something is out of sight, it does not exist. When a child has not reached this particular stage, a mother exists when she is only in their sight. When it's out of sight, the mother is also out of existence. But once they develop object permanence, they get to know that even if the mother has left, the mother will still be coming back. And that indicates progress and development also of their memory. Then. The fifth substage, we have tertiary circular reaction between 12 to 18 months. Uh, if you think of a child that is 12 to 18 months, this is a child most probably who is walking. And uh, because of the fact that the child is walking, this child in, uh, moves a lot than uh, before. And, uh, Due to the fact that they can move, it means that they get to interact with many things within the environment. So it is in this particular stage where we find the child being very experimentative. They experiment with everything that they come across within the environment. They come across a new object. The first thing maybe the child will do is to find out, uh, can I eat this particular object? So if it is something hard and they put into their mouth and they realize that they are not able to chew, they will draw it down and maybe try to hit it and see what can happen to it. So whatever they are doing, it's an experimentation. They want to see what will happen. Uh, if they come across maybe something that is liquid in nature, they get hold of it. They want, if it's something that they can swallow, they'll go ahead and drink. That is in the process of experimentation. So it's a stage in which a child can do some things that can even be harmful because they may eat if the environment is, uh, is, is not safe. We may have some dangers. So caregivers have a responsibility of ensuring that the environment is safe for the child, especially during this particular stage. Then the last sub-stage is referred to as internalization of schema, that is 18 to 24 months. And it's said to be a stage in which the infants develop the ability to use primitive sables, and they form enduring mental representation. Uh, it is in this particular stage, if you think of a child 18 to 24 months, uh, this is a child who is one and a half year to two years. It is a stage in which uh, the language is beginning to develop. That's why they are said to have the ability to use primitive sables. Uh, the things that they interact with, the people they interact with, mostly they have words. Uh, to use when maybe they are referring to those things when they are referring to those people. A child may be having one word and begins to use that word, uh, one word while interacting with uh, everybody within the environment. And uh, this marks now the end of uh, the first stage of development when the symbols begin to develop, uh, when mental representation begin to develop. This marks now the edge of the first 
stage of development. And from this, the child now proceeds on to the next stage of cognitive development, which we refer to as pre-operational stage. So pre-operational stage is between two to seven years. Every time when we are looking at these stages, I would like you to be figuring out that child that is aged between two to seven years. How do they behave? Because their behavior tells you about how they have developed cognitively. So I want us to ask ourselves, how do the child learn in this particular stage? So in this particular stage, you said that sables have begun to develop. And what we can say about children in this stage, it is a stage in which language gets to develop rapidly, their vocabulary gets to increase day by day, especially depending on the exposure and on the, depending on how often the child is talked to. So um, the fact that they have acquired a language uh, increases again opportunities for them to learn because through the language they have acquired they tend to ask questions. Uh, two to seven years is a child who is very explorative. They like exploring everything within the environment. So it is in this stage where we see them learn a lot through pretend play. So they engage in a lot of uh, pretend play activities. You see them acting out like a mother, like a father, acting out like a nurse, like a doctor, like a butcher man, and so on. It is a stage in which a child can act out any law that they have observed within their environment. But even as they engage in that play activities, it is a stage in which where they still struggle with the logic and taking the viewpoint of other people. And this tells us that uh, in this particular stage, pre-operational stage, as it is being referred to as pre-operational stage, it is a stage in which the child struggles to reason logically, meaning the thought pattern in this stage tends to be illogical in nature. The child is very egocentric in this particular stage, <coughs> but um, Despite the fact that they have some limitation, the, the, the nature of being explorative makes it possible for them to learn more things about the environment, makes them to have more questions about their environment. Though we are saying that the thought in this stage is said to be unsystematic, inconsistent, illogical, and sometimes incorrect. It is a kind of thought that is said to be perceptually bowed. Perceptually bowed meaning that uh, what they are able to understand is what they can see, what they can visualize. And the interpretation is based on what they are seeing. They are not able to go beyond what they are seeing. And you know sometimes what we see can be misreading. Uh, and they tend to have some uh, difficulties. There are certain rules they have not mastered in this particular stage. So between two to four years, uh, uh, th that stage is referred to as a boric substage, uh, where the thought of the child is said to be animistic. When we are saying that the thought of the child is animistic, it means that this particular child uh, attaches life even to lifeless things. They kind of believe everything has life in it. And I believe this is what enables them even to engage in a lot of pretend play activities. Even when there are no other children, a child may be in a certain environment, you see them or you hear them talk. Talk maybe to things. They might be talking to a stone which they have taken out to represent maybe a doll that they are playing with and they'll be talking to it. When they are talking to it, this child believes that that stone is having life. It might be a chair, you see them talking to it. 
In their mind, maybe they will have figured that, that chair may be to be a representation of an animal. So that is a mystic thought. They believe everything has a life. When they are hit by something, and maybe they felt pain, they kind of try to revenge and say that this is what has hit you, I also hit you. And they think that maybe if it's a table that has, that has hit them, and now they go ahead and hit it. They believe that that pain was that table will also experience pain, and they feel good. Uh, between four to seven years, the child is said to be in an intuitive stage. And in this particular stage, there are two characteristics which emerge, which is conservation and uh, reversibility. A child is saying no to have the ability to master the role of conservation and uh, reversibility. So in this particular stage, the child is not able uh, to conserve. They, they, they don't have ability to conserve. Again, they have difficulties with the reversibility going backward. So for example, you present a child with two cookies. One is whole, another one is broken into two pieces. You present them with an option of choosing either the whole or the one that is in pieces. Most children that are in this particular stage will go for the cookies that are two pieces. And the reason as to why they pick two pieces is because they believe that two pieces are more. They believe that the quantity is more than when it is just one. When that is happening, that tells you that the child has not developed the ability to conserve. They are not able to reverse and see that if these two pieces are brought together, they will give us one cookie. So those are limitations in a preoperational stage which we should be cognizant of when we are interacting with children in this particular stage so that we can offer them support that helps them to overcome this limitation. But even with these limitations, we are saying the abilities they have acquired. Children in this stage are very curious, very inquisitive. And uh, this helps them to run. They keep on wondering, asking questions. So for them to run in this particular stage, it's good when you answer their questions and give them opportunities to pray. Uh, the third stage of development is referred to as concrete operational stage, which is between 7 to 11 years. Uh, at this point, we are referring to, stay, to this stage as concrete operational stage, uh, meaning that their understanding is dependent on the use of concrete, concrete things within their environment. It is a stage in which they begin to develop the ability to reason, to think logically, and. Uh, that ability to reason logically is dependent on the presence of things that they can see, things that are, that are, uh, that are, that are tangible. Uh, because at this point, the ability to reason abstractly is not yet developed. So we present them with a hypothetical situation, a hypothesis they may not understand such at this uh, point. But it is a stage in which the, the child now becomes less egocentric and begins to think about other people's point of view, meaning they can now participate better in group discussions, in group activities, and give others opportunity also to speak and they listen to them. They begin to understand that their thoughts are unique to them and not everyone else will share their thoughts, their feelings and uh, opinions. All that indicates that uh, egocentrism tendencies have gone down. During this particular stage, the limitations of pre-operational stage get to be 
overcome. The rise above the difficulties that they were experiencing during the pre-operational stage. Uh, then the fourth stage uh, is referred to as the formal operational stage, which is uh, be from 11 years and above. And it is in this stage that now the child gets to move above concrete experiences, meaning a child now who is in a formal operational stage, when they are given a mathematical problem to solve, like if it's addition, if it is multiplication, we don't expect this child now to continue using counters as it happens during the concrete operational stage. This child should be able to handle mathematical problems mentally. They have the ability now to reason abstractly, the ability to reason logically is developed. They can uh, draw conclusions if they are you've engaged them in an experiment. They can comfortably arrive at a conclusion and they can confidently say, this is my conclusion from this particular activity. They can uh, reason out hypothetically and they are able to see multiple potential solution to a problem. So when presented with a problem, let's say for example it's a mathematical problem, they get to understand that uh, we can have different methods, different formulas of solving the same problem. They think more scientifically about the world allowed them because they question themselves about so many things within the environment. Why do this and this maybe happen like this? And that helps individuals at this level to continue learning more when they are thinking more scientifically because it means or it shows some sense of commitment to, to the desire to develop more knowledge and also to understand the way things are within the environment. So having gone through the four stages of cognitive development, it is important for us to ask ourselves what are the implications of this particular theory. It remains a theory if you just understand the stages and then that's all. We need to go beyond just understanding the theory and asking ourselves What's the implication of this theory to me as a teacher, to me as a practitioner in early childhood? One thing that we get from this theory is that children learn best through doing and actively exploring, meaning that uh, a child should learn hands on, especially in the first two stages of cognitive development. They should be involved hands on. And then it's important for us to understand that children learn as individual. Meaning it is important to understand the level that every child is operating in because children come from uh, different backgrounds. Uh, from backgrounds where the levels of stimulation also tends to be very different. So even if you know the age of a child, it's always good to conduct an assessment, a kind of an evaluation that tells you the mental stage that the child is operating in. And therefore, as teachers, <laughs> there are certain things that um, we should emphasize on, uh, especially if we are applying Piaget theory of cognitive development. As teachers, we should focus on uh, the process of learning rather than the end product. If you are focusing on the process, it means that you give more attention to activities that you require the children to engage in. And when you're paying attention to the activities, you also pay attention to the abilities of your learners. What are they able to do? depending on the stage of development they are involved in. 
Uh, again, we should emphasize on use of active methods of teaching, which enables children to explore, to discover certain things, to construct their own truths. Again, we should emphasize on use of collaborative methods of teaching. And this is important because through collaborative methods of teaching, children get to learn from each other. Uh, again, we should devise situations that present useful problems to learners. You should, uh, children are not just supposed, uh, should not just engage in activities for the sake of. Whenever there is a practitioner, a teacher of ECD, you one should uh, carefully think about the situations, the activities that these children are being engaged in because they should be activities that to help them to develop ability to solve problems. And again, it's important when the teacher gets to evaluate the level of a child's development and with evaluation of your learners, you are able to set suitable tasks for them. Because if you give them tasks that are beyond their level, you end up just frustrating them, which is not healthy. They need activities that they can be able to accomplish and again feel successful about it. So I believe there is a lot that we can learn from this theory and you're able to, to draw as much as possible from this theory. If you go through the theory again, stage by stage, because in every stage of development, there is that which you can learn from, uh, you can draw from each stage. And therefore, I urge you as a student, as a scholar, to read again about the theory and get to see what are these things from this theory that if I apply, they will contribute to growth in my practice as a practitioner in ECD. So that brings us to the end of our topic three. These televised lectures supplement our robust online learning going on on our MKU online platform. You can view more on our televised lectures via our online platform. We are in a digital era and Mount Kenya University knows this. The following are the steps to follow so as to complete your online application. Download the application form from the website www.mku.ac.ke. Attach copies of your academic certificates and ID. Pay the application fees via M-Pesa pay bill number 270988. Your ID is the account number. 2,000 shillings is the charge for a postgraduate. You can also deposit in the bank accounts provided on the website. Then, email all the above to apply at mku.ac.ke.